Hello and welcome back to the Villa Filler podcast. I am here as always with my good friend Dan Wiseman. Dan, Aston Villa beat Everton 3-0 last night. How are you doing, first of all, mate? Oh, very good, mate. Very good. I feel like you've, you've answered your own question there, haven't you, <laughs> in that <laughs> intro. Um, no, nah, really good, mate. Well. Last night was, uh, I was still on a high of it today, coming, like, coming back up to Manchester and everything like that. I was, just couldn't stop thinking about Think about last night. What a game! Mate. What a game! Just powers your weekend, doesn't it? When you when you get a performance like that, it just feels like it puts an extra extra spring in yourself. I mean, no matter what, you just everything feels a bit brighter, doesn't it, mate? Yeah, just the, the giddiness you get off a win like that, especially in the manner, the scoreline, the performances. Overall, it was it was honestly it was it was just phenomenal. And you know, coming into this game, I think there were a few circumstances that certainly swung this match in Villa's favour before a ball was even kicked. Obviously, Everton were without Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Richarlison and Jordan Pickford. I think, you know, the, the, the two former are probably more important to the side than the latter because I don't think there's anything that Jordan Pickford could do to have saved any of the three goals that went in last night. Um, but it was an interesting Everton side and there was a few, for sure, questionable decisions, I think, that, that Rafa Benitez made. His in-game management whilst is usually sort of lauded as, as, as some of the best in the industry. Um, at nil-nil, taking off Salomon Rondon for, uh, for, for Andre Gomez, that didn't really seem like the tactical change that I would make if you're chasing a game. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself there, Dan. To be fair, Everton probably have the better chance um, of the first half early on as well. Um, I believe it was a ball in from Alex Awobi. Um, Everton were able to sort of counter-attack Villa um, they soaked up the pressure well, broke really quickly, put that ball across um, and, and Rondon at full stretch wasn't able to connect to it, thankfully. Felt like a massive let off at the time, Dan. Um, again, if Dominic Calvert-Lewin's fit, probably scores that, doesn't he, mate? Yeah, yeah. It was The first half performance was like, okay. It wasn't a bad performance. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't sat there at half time raging. It wasn't as... I didn't think it was as poor as it was against like Newcastle or, or Brentford or something like that, where I, I think we can probably pick up the first half performances in those home games as being quite poor. But I thought it was just average, really. I'm not convinced. I thought the five-back worked really well against Chelsea. I wasn't co- as convinced of it this time around. It feels like we put a lot of emphasis on... Matt Target particularly, because still a large amount of, of, of Villa play still goes down that left-hand side, you know, whether that's a hangover from Grealish, whether that's because, you know, they sort of had Ben Godfrey in that right full-back role um, of their own. It's, it's, it's an interesting one. Uh, but most of the play was going down that left-hand side. And, and Matt Target, he's really good in offensive situations when he's got an overlap, but he doesn't have the ability just one-on-one to beat a man and get round a defender. So, you know, if, if when Jack was there, we, we saw a lot of really nice crosses. You know, you, you think about those slide, those ones he slides in across the ground that Ollie Bennett from, benefited from, sorry, massively last season. We saw a lot of that from Tiggs. Uh, but he doesn't really have that ability to beat a man, uh, like on pace or on trickery. You feel like he needs an overlap. And the problem is, is when you play a five-back, all of the creativity in the wide areas, which needs to be a lot in this Villa side because Jacob Ramsey is absolutely fantastic, but it's a lot for him to orchestrate a two, you know, you've got the two strikers up there, to orchestrate that sort of triangle that you get going between the two strikers for that, for a young lad to orchestrate that properly, especially with seasoned strikers like uh, Watkins and Ings, it's quite difficult. So he needs a lot of help from the fullbacks. And Matt Target, I'm not sure, can really, we get the best out of him playing that role. And Matt, Matty Cash, although he can be proven wrong, didn't really get into those positions in the first half either, did, did he really? We didn't see him sort of bombing on and getting those crosses at the cross that Ings particularly is going to benefit from. Uh, and so the system sort of left a little bit to be desired in the first half, but it wasn't wasn't a bad performance. It's just, I felt like we needed to change it up and lo and behold, when we did, the rest is history, isn't it, mate? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think again, the 3-5-2 or the 5-3-2, the, the um, was to sort of maybe prepare for what's to come. We've got some very tough games coming up ahead. Obviously, Axel can't play against United with them being his parent club. Um, so maybe that does kind of, kind of hinder the plan as to how Villa set up. Will Dean throw Courtney in um, and, and keep it as, as that back five? I'm not too sure, but um, I think, you know, with, with Richarlison and with Dominic Calvert-Lewin, 
the back five maybe makes sense. And again, you know, Salomon Rondon, although he's spent some time out in China or God knows wherever he's been, um, you know, is a, he's a handful and Axel and, and, and Mings handled him, you know, to perfection. Um, in the first half, especially, you know, the second half, he didn't get a sniff and I think that's why he came off really. Because um, he, he just was being, he was marked out of the game so often. Um, but yeah, I think the system, do I like it? It's all right. I, as soon as things changed, as you said, Dan, Villa looked so much more positive and we were more flexible in the game. And I think, uh, you know, due to the, the fact we had an extra substitution due, uh, with McGinn coming off from a concussion, um, it looked like a 4-3-3 at times and it kind of went back to a 4-4-2 um, as a few things had changed. But, you know, Villa managed to remain competitive in this game for long enough. And I think, you know, the big watershed moment of this game, Dan, is in that second half, you know, only two minutes before Villa go on to score the first goal of the game is when Damari Gray's coming inside and he just can't quite bend his shot in at the far post. I feel like if that goes in, it's a completely mm. different game. And I think that shot was a massive wake-up call for Villa. And as I say, we went on to go and score um, only, you know, two minutes later. And, and what a goal from Matty Cash. And I think as well, something that we have to credit and, you know, again, this was sort of by um, circumstances with McGinn coming off. Marvellous, fantastic performance. But what that allowed Douglas Louise to do is play in that midfield Metzala role, Dan, that we like to see him play, uh, you know, in that number eight position. Everything went through Douglas Louise in the second half. He's who scored man of the match with an 8.6 rating. He was absolutely phenomenal. And that little ball he plays into cash just to set him up. Absolutely sublime. Then the finish is even better. Just when you think he's taken one touch too many or a heavy touch, to absolutely strike that into the top corner with your with your left foot, your weaker foot, it's just absolutely phenomenal, Dan. And, and again, all just came at the right time for Villa, didn't it? Yeah, it really did, mate. It was Douglas was was fantastic, but this is a role that you know, not to borrow in trouble, but we've been wanting to see Douglas in for a long time, Dan. I know both you and I have spent a lot of time watching Douglas go and play for the Selecao. And that's where he plays. They play him alongside Fabinho or Casemiro. And Marv won't get any of the plaudits for his performance. But you're absolutely right, mate. He was absolutely fantastic. What a player he's come on. It really looked like he looked quite out of his depth, didn't he? You rewind a couple of seasons ago to that first season in the Premier League. Like Marv really struggled. And he's really turned it around. And he won't get the plaudits in this game or probably the next or, or very much at all really just because the net that's unfortunately the role of a defensive midfielder isn't it is that you're, yeah. you you know the spotlight is never on you unfortunately but he was fantastic and what he allows that villa team to do is unlock that douglas performance and and i think that's the problem is is that well, i say it's a problem I, I that's not the word i want to use but um, John McGinn, because he has the vice captains in, just because of the fact he's John McGinn, feels untouchable, doesn't he? In that yeah. starting line, it feels undroppable. You know, if he's fit, then he's going to play. It's very rare that, but you, you sort of see the performance, and, and you, this is no slight on John McGinn. We really got the best of him in that Chelsea game, but that midfield functioned really, really nicely to the point where I think if I'm Dean Smith, especially with United next, you can't look at Nakamba in that starting role for me because he was fantastic. Unlocked a lot of what Villa did and you're absolutely right, mate. The goal was was fantastic. I was so happy for Matty Cash. I mean, it's only his third shot on target for Villa. Can you believe that? It was like He's That's played crazy. so many games for us now. That's only the third shot on target he's had. It's his, his first goal. Said he had that dream, didn't he? Which is which I absolutely loved um, of him scoring at the Holt end. And he, he deserved it. He had a really good game yesterday. I think for me, he's, he was right up there with Louise and and Ings um, from Man of the Match. Obviously, there's another contender for that award, which ended up winning the award that I'm sure we'll get onto discussing at length very soon. Um, but no, Matty was uh, Matty was fantastic. And it's nice for him to show, I think, that he has that in product that I was talking about. You know, when you've got the fullbacks, a lot of them rise on them. We need them to show that they can provide in the final third. And I think for Matty to come inside and do it on his left foot as well, um, Really nice moment, really nice. And he, he seems to absolutely love it. And I think that, that made it all the more sweet, didn't it, mate? Absolutely. And it was his second goal at the whole end, Dan. He scored in that 5-5 yep. um, in the championship. So, you know, it's an end that, you know, he, he's, he's clearly liking scoring goals. Hopefully we can see a few more from him. It was a very good second half performance in particular from Matty. Um, but yeah, Dan, I mean, 
the man of the hour, or more like the man of the 21 minutes, Leon Bailey, man, what a guy. Jamaica, we love you. Well, producing yeah. such a wonderful talent. Oh, my God, this guy. It, 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 again, you know, it, it all happens at the right time. The substitutions, again, just to kind of deviate, Dean Smith got this tactically spot on in absolutely every manner, bringing Bailey on when he did, um, you know, sort of maintaining that pressure and, and adding um, a sort of element of, of maybe unknown because, you know, I'm seeing on Twitter a lot of Everton fans hadn't a clue who Leon Bailey was. Um, you know, I've seen a, a fair bit of reaction um, from fans, you know, Villa fans who sit sort of near the away uh, fans. The Everton fans were going... Why are you all? Ch- what, what? Why is he getting such a good reception? We don't understand. Like we, he's played four games for you, but I mean that's just how talented this man is. And um, I hate, I hate to put a downer on it, Dan, but I'm already, I already know this man's going to break our hearts in a few years' time. So I'm trying not to get too yeah. high. But man, the performance was wonderful. Um, I think the, uh, the the goals department have have given that as an own goal, as it did come off Dean's head. But that 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 ball that he put in, I can tell you the hundred percent conviction, Dan. He meant to, he, you know, that was a shot. And I can tell you that because Douglas had a free kick probably about 10 minutes later, just right on the byline almost. And Leon Bailey goes up to him and he tells him to, he, you can see he's pointing to the top corner. He's telling him to whip it in. Um, so it's clearly something that Bailey was thinking of, you know, with that sort of corner as, uh, in mind for him as well. Um, I think it's, it's unfortunate defending for Everton. I think Dean has to step out because you've got Tyrone Mings coming onto it. Um, had the ball of, of found Tyrone, does it go in? I, I, I'm not really too sure, to be honest. I'd like to think so. doesn't really get in and, uh, involved with the goals as much as we perhaps like Mings to. Um, but the set pieces in general have been brilliant, Dan. And the lid just absolutely blew off the place when that went and hit the back of the net, didn't it, mate? It was absolutely wonderful. Incredible. Incredible. You... You felt a little bit for the lad. Uh, and we said it on the pod, mate. We were like, oh, this is probably, at the t- in terms of the standard that they've come in at, the best player we've signed in our lifetime. Yeah. I would say I can't think of a player, you know, since I've been supporting the club that's come in at a better level than Leon Bailey already is. Um, and it, it really, when we, I, I see what the Villa tried to do when we announced him is it, because, you know, we tried, Jack had, that was really gathering momentum either we just signed or it was you know we were waiting on that and, and Twitter was just an absolute you know it was a car crash wasn't it and I think Villa just tried to add that sign into the mix and just lighten the mood but it just sort of felt got a bit lost in the void and we couldn't really give it the positive reaction that we wanted to because of what was going on with with the signing and everything and so it's really nice for him to really announce himself like that and and get that reception and he seemed really enamoured by the, the response that he got from the crowd and everything like that, whether he was expected. I don't really think he knows what he means to Villa fans just yet. And that, I think, was, was the game where, like, he probably doesn't know the role that he has in terms of who, not just who he has to replace, but the output he has to replace and the way in which he does it. Like, you know, you, you've got Anwar El Ghazi, who we, we both love on the podcast, mate, who you can rely, as he showed last season, for, to maybe get, you know, you, you're looking at double figures in, in goal contributions across the season. And he, he he can sort of add to that, but he doesn't do it with the flair and the style that Jack did. But Leon can, if not more, I would say. I think I think he's definitely got more trickery and a, a bit more cheekiness to him. And he came on and he was actually, I've got a shout out else because I was standing next to him with the game, friend of the pod. Um, I know he'll be listening. And he, he made That's a very awesome. good point when we were walking the well. When he heads that ball down, you knew it's you knew it's going in, didn't you? 100%. It's not, it's, you know, any other, I can't, you know, maybe Ings or someone like that, but there aren't too many players that you could have in that Villa squad that as soon as you see them take that touch, you're just waiting for the ball to hit the back of the net. And that is, I think, to have that kind of confidence in a player, having only seen net, 40 minutes, you know, you give him the time that he got against Chelsea and, and in other games and stuff like that. So it's like, that's that's really quite endearing, I think, to, to Leon Bailey as a player, that the fact that as soon as he, he heads that ball and you see him winding up that left foot, you already know it's, it's going to hit the back of the net. And that's goal number one um, of, of many, I'm, I'm sure. And he said that it was a little bit of tightness in his quad. It was his idea to come off. I think you know he, he was sort of he, he put put the idea forward himself because he knew we got a tough run of games coming up, and you know it's a it's a, it's a responsible thing to do. McGinn should be okay because it was only a concussion sub, 
hopefully Matt is okay as well because he seemed to go off with with um a little pro- no niggle as well didn't he as, as yeah. some kind of problem there so hopefully he, he's all right and we, we do have that full squad because it was great to see Bertie come on as well and this is you know I've definitely got lost in the quad yesterday but great to see Bertie back out on the pitch um he was actually I don't know if you saw but he was ready to come on before we scored the third goal. So he's, he's Dean Smith, he was there on the touchline. Leon runs through and smashes it down. And Dean Smith's like, ah, but he's going to sit back down. And that, that's got to be a tough moment. So I was uh, I was glad that he got onto the pitch, mate. That was that was really nice to see. Great to see Emmy back in between the sticks. Considering we've still got players like Sanson to come back into the fold, to see a full strength Villa like this. This is what I've been talking about the whole time, mate, where I've been saying, like, we don't know how good Villa are because we haven't seen the full strength squad yet. This is the first time we've looked at it. It's 99%. percent i would love to see what Sanson can do. But considering this is how good we looked, I think we can now officially say that if we can get it right this season, we can be really excited. Absolutely. And Danny Ings as well. Special shout out to this man. First of all, the assist for Leon Bailey. Absolutely phenomenal. If his name is either you know Bruno Fernandes or Kevin De Bruyne, it's, it, you know, it, it's the best assist the world's ever seen. It was a wonderful ball. The way... He managed to wait that, and and, and as you as you kind of alluded to there, mate, with Bailey, you, you just knew he was scoring that. There was there was no doubt in anyone's mind in the stadium. We we, we were ready to erupt. Um, the pass was phenomenal, and just Danny Ings as a professional. To any young, uh, you know, listeners of the podcast, any aspiring footballers, this he is the template. If if you want to make yep, it, agreed. you run you run as much as Danny Ings does. You you cover as much grass as Danny Ings does. You put every challenge in with as much intent as Danny Ings did last night, because my God, mate, he's phenomenal. And it wasn't just last night. He has done this in every single game he's played so far for Villa, but especially, like, it just, it felt like last night, it, it, the, the goals all came in quick succession, but I think what allowed Villa to go on and, and really take advantage of this was the, the manner of the performance and how thorough and professional it was. And when you've got your striker going in and backing up your fullbacks, and often at times the outside centre halves and making challenges, tracking runs, putting his foot in, uh, giving a little push here and there. That's when you know that we've got something really special at the club. Danny Ings is again just phenomenal. And um, yep. I know you've just said I don't think we've had a player come in at the peak of their powers quite in our lifetime. I think Danny Ings, you can put Danny Ings up there with Bailey as well. To mm-hmm. be honest, mate, um, you know, two goals, two assists in five games for him so far. Um, in an ideal world, he scores a few more goals, but Dan, the goals are being shared about evenly. He's putting in so much work. And yeah, again, just a massive shout out to Danny Ings because, mate, he, he's just been absolutely fucking incredible. Like, I, I, I think in our lifetime specifically, Dan, it's not, you know, the, the striking department has certainly been an area where we've lacked him, isn't it? And it, it, yeah. it felt like last season with Oli man, we've got some player. And of course, Watkins is still a, a, fan, a fantastic talent and has such a high ceiling. But to have someone like Danny Ings, you know, as we say, mate, at, at the peak of his powers, come to the club, scoring goals, uh, putting in performances like that, really making a difference both on and off the pitch. And it, it, it just means so much, mate. It means so much. Um, and, you know, speaking of strikers and staying on that subject, Dan, Aston Villa's XG, it was an XG draw, Dan. It was an XG wow. draw. 0.96 to 0.96 and Villa managed to score three goals in Everton. Uh, unfortunate for them, didn't manage to score at all. Um, I'm not sure the last time we, we, we drew with a side on XG, but um, to be honest, you know, I mean, it's, it's probably accurate. The XG for, for scoring from a corner is probably like 0. 0.001. Um, yeah. Azmir Begovic just had an absolute howler, but mate, as I say, I don't really think you know, you put Jordan Pickford in there. I think it, the game still probably ends 3-0, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right, mate. It's it's, it's a, one of those where, you know, when... I think you've got a... a Rafa is a, is a manager I, I like a lot. I think he deserves a lot of credit for still making... You know, if you, if you put that front three of Tamari Gray, Andrew Townsend and Salomon Wandon into most other teams in the Premier League, it would look you'd be like, this, this is a relegation. Like that, that's, that's, as Premier League goes, that's, but Rafa's really worked that well. And I watched their game against Burnley and I, I was slightly fearful, to be honest with you, because they, they looked really good on, on Monday night, didn't they? Um, and so we did really good 
really good job of nullifying that. And I know they didn't have Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And I know they didn't have Richarlison. And to be honest with you, mate, I don't know. Like, I don't think Jordan Pickford adds much to that. So I'm sort of a bit hesitant to, to add him into that. Um, but those few guys up front, yeah, I, I, you know, they probably would have would have got a goal or something like that, just because you know, they're, they're so talented with Charleston and Calvert Lewin. But you can only play what's in front of you, and I think the Villa jobs, Villa boys did a, a really good job of that. I want to give Mings a shout out as well because he was an wow. absolute colossus yesterday, and um, obviously we only get to time gets to talk about Tyrone Mings when he makes a mistake, apparently. So shout out to you, Tyrone, because um, I, this is the thing, mate, is that we, like. He can. He is that good. This yet yesterday was a prime example of how good he is. He just needs to do that all the time, and he, like he will win everybody over, no problem. So we we know it's in there, Tyrone. It's just like there's four or five brain farts that you could have throughout a season. I think we could do without, but he, he was an absolute man mountain yesterday. Um, great for Axel and and Ezri as well. To I'm, I'm loving that Axel's getting a real run as well. And yeah, so much to be positive as well, man. So much to be positive about. There is, mate. And, you know, Chelsea have just beat Spurs 3-0. Obviously, we have them in the Carabao Cup on Wednesday. Um, Antonio Rudiger adding to the misery in the 92nd minute. Um, really, really professional performance from Chelsea, to be fair. Um, however, you know, they've got Manchester City following the game with us. Hopefully, it's a weakened side. Um, I have a feeling Villa will probably play a somewhat weakened side. I mean, by comparison, of course, it will it will just pale. It, it will it'll be nowhere near. But... Um, you know, it's a shame that the likes of Jaden and Chuck um, are not going to be uh, able to participate in this game because you'd think bona fide starters, given the performances so far. Um, I think, you know, Villa do want to take these kind of, you know, the, the Carabao Cup, these competitions seriously. But I mean, when you're drawing Chelsea in the third round, it's a bit difficult. So hopefully Tuchel can help us out with, um, with, with a, a kind of team selection. But I mean, considering all the, uh, you know, the, the, the very nice things he had to say about our performance, I think he's, probably going to look to just absolutely steamroll us. Um, yeah. he, you know, he's been very complimentary to performance. And there was, you know, there's a few times um, he was asked during, you know, Champions League press, like, oh, why, you know, why have you made changes? You know, you're, you're only playing against Villa and he's, you know, he's, he's gone, listen, they've, they've, given, they've given us a good game. Um, so, you know, respect to, respect to Tuchel for recognising the game. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if we'll do a podcast on this, Dan. I'm going to be there. So if we do it, maybe the next day, uh, I guess it kind of depends on the outcome. But um, for sure, you guys will hear from us um, uh, after after Manchester United, because I think that's the next game. Um, yep. Dan, any final words from yourself, mate? No, absolutely not. I just want to say, we, I told you yesterday, can we, we just need to play Everton at home every week, mate. Again, yeah. one of my all-time, all-time favourite Villa games, again. That closely followed up by the game against Everton when we first came up, and that, that's sort of written in folklore, isn't it? That game. So um, I thought we've got more wins, fourteen wins against Everton than every other team at home in the Premier League. Next up is nine. It's West Ham and Spurs, I think, that are tied on nine. So we've got five more wins against Everton at Villa Park than against any other side. So El Kazuiko, mate, it's a wrap. It's massive game it's over. Massive, yeah, mate. It's already done, mate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely love to see it. But guys, if you did enjoy this podcast. Let us know by hitting the like button and comment in your thoughts below on the game. Let us know who your man of the match was. I think it's fair to say Leon Bailey, but we'd like to know who you guys have to say. And as well, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. When we get to 5,000 subscribers, we've got some tasty things to give away for you guys. So if you can help us cross that threshold, the quicker we can give away some awesome stuff to you guys. So as I say, like, comment, subscribe, and up the bell.